breaking news. Da, 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 da. Just when you thought they were out, just when you thought a little bit of stability came to the Philadelphia Flyers, things were just they were just calming down. No, 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 no. Not here. Not your team, your town, your Philadelphia Flyers. Not the team that very clearly needs a backup goalie. Not the team that we've been talking about for a few weeks now. Going back almost a month. Keith Jones on this show saying, we have a lot of goalies in the pipeline. A lot of Russian goalies. Danny Breer comes on the show. Notes that, hey, the paperwork, the visa paperwork for Alexei Kolosov. It's getting there. Taking a little bit longer than we expected, but it's getting there. And then, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, on a Thursday morning, a report comes across and you go, ah, I gotta be careful, gotta be careful with this kind of stuff. Can't totally vet it. Ivan Fedotov, allegedly, reportedly, released from his contract with the KHL with Moscow. Two years after the Flyers thought he'd be coming over, a year after the Flyers had to apply for the suspension, the porting of his contract for a year, it's not confirmed yet. Our good friend Kevin Curzo of The Athletic, along with Pierre Lebrun and Chris Johnston, putting out that the National Hockey League has said there are no roadblocks that they can see preventing Ivan Fedotov from making his way stateside and playing for your team, your town, your Philadelphia Flyers. Again, this has not been officially confirmed nor announced by the team. And as we all, I believe at this point, are very acutely aware, geopolitical situation here with the U.S., with Russia, with the NHL, with the KHL, all around. All right, so there are a lot, lot of moving pieces here. However, it would appear as though there is a chance. So you're saying there is a chance that Ivan Fedotov could make his way to Philadelphia and all of a sudden, man, maybe he even jumps over Alexei Kolosov. Maybe he even gets to take Felix Sandstrom's spot. Could we see a playoff scenario where Ivan Fedotov is your backup? He's like six foot eight. He's a big old Russian boy. Could it be our backup? Could it be the number one? I don't know. We're excited. We're here. Welcome into an emergency podcast. Snow the goalie. That was like three straight minutes of me talking, and I apologize. But you have to understand, there's a lot here. And who better to get into it with? Bunny will be here. He's doing NHL radio right now. But when he's done, he'll be coming over here. But in the meantime, I got the guy with the backwards hat who won't tell us who's on the front. A guy who would have been down covering the Philadelphia Phillies on opening day. Very clearly, this is the thing that happens. They have big news in the Flyers. You're usually doing a Phillies game. The world, the universe, it all worked out for you. No Phillies game today. Instead, you get potential Russian goalie news. How are you? Do I even need to speak at this point? Yes. I'm just curious. Yes. I'm just curious. Do I even need to speak today? Let's go. I mean, is there is there anything that's specific news? No. Outside of Russia. <laughs> uh, no. No, there's not. Um, and I think that the reason why we're not hearing anything from the Flyers is exactly what you just said. There's still a lot of things that have to happen in order to make this a reality. Mm -hmm. um, and this one's a little bit more sensitive because of what happened to Ivan Fedotov in 2022. Allegedly. Uh, Allegedly, be careful here, Anthony. Well, that's it. Yeah, okay, well, so, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean, right? I mean, so he went off. He he chose. He went to go do his military service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was exactly what happened. And yes. um, so I think it's it's kind of important for us to to put that caveat out there that while there are reports out there that this is could happen, and it certainly can, that much I can say. I, I, I'm not sure we can really go too far into anything as to when will he get here? Will he go straight to the NHL? Would he would they feel like he needs it? Can he be called up? Can he whatever the deals are like? There's so many ifs ands or we have to figure outs um, still to come. And it's going to take a, it's going to take a few days, I think. Um, you might get something by the weekend. You might not. It's that's kind of the situation right now. So, uh, you know, there's nothing to report from a Flyers perspective. Um, I do know that they needed to get some um, guide guidance from the NHL. Uh, apparently, they spoke with the league 
today. Um, obviously, you saw from that report that came out from The Athletic, uh, from uh, Pierre and uh, Chris Johnston, those guys are as plugged in at the league office as, as anybody. And uh, so if they're putting it out, you got to anticipate that it's probably accurate that the league has, you know, looked at it and thinks it's OK. But now how do you how does it all come to pass? Right. That's the thing that has to be figured out. And so that so while your excitement is is uh, admirable there, is, I mean, listen, there, it's it's fair. Like it, I get it. You have to temper it all that. But like there's a chance now and we had written this off. In fairness, Ant, like the the reason that there's yeah. excitement is we had really written off the chance of this guy ever potentially coming over because it just looked like he had reportedly signed a longer uh, contract with Moscow a year ago, and that was kind of a bummer to people who wanted to see the guy over here. And like I think just having a little bit of that feeling of hey, this actually could happen. We could still be a ways away, as somebody noted. You know, uh, Rob Ski over on YouTube. Work visas don't happen overnight. We know this with Kolasov. They've been working on that for a bit. And that still hasn't happened. Uh, he's still not here and eligible and all that. I think that there's just something exciting about like, hey, this is a guy that you thought you'd written off wasn't ever going to happen. And the possibility of it happening, even though you don't know what he's going to look like and how he's going to adapt and all that, I think there has to be some kind of excitement there. It's like it's like a pent-up excitement yeah. that people are, are yearning to let free. And yeah, you can I, see somebody who's been letting – some pent up excitement free. The man with the quafted hair on the side looks like he's been sleeping in watching some college basketball highlights. And that's Bundy. How you doing, you butte? I used to miss the days I used to fucking uh, defect in the bathroom at the airport. It was a better, more fun store. <laughs> I think that's the fastest Bundy bomb we've ever had with him on the show. I think it's four words. You guys call, four call words us in now. for the emergency. Awesome. You know what? Uh, it's it's an exciting time. I didn't hear what you said. I don't know, Anthony. This is like Anthony's department, right? I, I chime in about just the goaltender, you know, what it's like to have another face in that locker room. Um, I didn't hear you at the beginning, Anthony, but it sure sounds like if it is Fedotov, he, he'd be the one to come, right? Like, we no one knew this as early as today and Kolosov would go to the minors. Is that correct? Well, again, I, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with Fedotov, and I don't know when he's getting here. And I, you know, those kinds of things are way too early for there to be any kind of you know confirmation from anybody about anything. Um, uh, you know, there's so much wild speculation that's out there. I think it's unfair to to suggest that okay, this guy's going to come in and he's going to play right away. He's going to come in and just be a backup. He's going to come in and um, be a playoff goalie. Who know? I mean, there's so much that you could you could suggest. The only thing that I will clear up um, from the last episode, and I put it out on Twitter, um, and and so I can I can say you know when we were talking about Kolosov coming over, could the Flyers call him up? And I had said that they that those two um, recalls that they had done uh, originally on on March 8th happened before the deadline, and while the actual paper transaction to send them down happened before the deadline the recalls actually occurred after the deadline so they technically do count for the towards the four so the, in essence the flyers have used all four of their recalls that said felix sandstrom is currently here on an emergency recall okay and this goes back to the carter hart situation when when redacted. carter <laughs> redacted when 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 he um redacted left the team the the league gave the flyers some you know cap relief and roster relief and part of that was allowing for an emergency recall the emergency recall at the time was cal peterson okay the way the emergency recall works is while the emergency exists you can in fact flop flip flop to another player at the same position within that same emergency. So what the Flyers did is they had it as Cal Peterson and then they said, you know what, we're going to go to Felix Sandstrom. Sandstrom comes up, Peterson goes on waivers, ends up going back down. But Peterson is technically here on an emergency recall. So you could have a goalie, and we thought up until today that that goalie was Kolosov, Kolosov could then be called up to play um, and in place of Sandstrom and only in place of Sandstrom, not in place of anyone else, because otherwise he would be a regular recall. 
Uh, that is, of course, unless Sam Erson got injured, in which case then you can have an emergency recall for him. Okay, um, but that was the thought that we thought about that we we had. Where does it fit with with a guy like Fedotov? If in fact he does come over here and, and play with the team, that's where the unknown is. Because does he just go? Does he just immediately report straight to the NHL, and it doesn't count as a recall? Does it still count as a as a recall? So therefore, it has to be as part of an emergency recall, right? Or do they have to say that? he has to go play down there first and then potentially come up as a recall as to replace the emergency. Like there's so many different unknowns. And I think that that's what the flyers, the questions the flyers are asking right now and trying to get answers from the league. And then once they have them, which they may actually have the answers, right? They have to consider what they're going to do and the timing of everything. Like what's the best case scenario for them? How do they make it work? So I think that there's a lot of things. That's why I said that there's there's just way too much for anybody to say, well, this is definitely going to happen or that's definitely going to happen. It's just another thing in the mix now. But anyway. <laughs> I just can't, I can't stop thinking about that Jeff Galuli. The last minute Anthony was talking, I saw that from Hextall 87. All I could think about was that movie there where they, yes. they clubbed her. Yeah. <laughs> Need an injury. Anyone got Tanya Harding's number? <laughs> Those were good times. Oh God! <laughs> anyway, I was in those. I was in the Olympics <laughs> that year. Yeah, that, with Tanya Hardy. You should have seen that media circus. Oh, that's right, Bundy. You were in that Olympics. Yeah, '94 in Lilyhammer. That's a Holy flex right cow. there. That's a flex out of Bundy. That's I almost. Did. Like, I, that's I, almost like I actually a... saw a true story I, on my kids' heads. I saw Tanya Harding walking in the village. Right, and I'm alone. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go see where she's going. And so I did. I like walk around the village. She went into the medical like center, and she had to report for gender testing. Really? Yes. That was because, but well, that was all because they had that whole thing with the Russian teams that happened in the eighties, right? Yeah, that was nineteen ninety four. And the only reason I knew that is I kind of went in, and, and there was like a list of people, and there was a line there. Yeah. I'm like, wow, fuck! I'm glad they didn't do that to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no that's that's interesting i forgot you were there that must have been like everything must have been completely media circus that's like, all yeah, like you, it's almost like you forgot that the end the the hockey players were there because that's all people talked about from that olympics was was that yeah dancing what a silver there. no one would have known about it so <laughs> anyway. there there are a few things that i want to get to here because we're only doing this as a as a short thing this isn't like a, a long full episode because again like ann has reiterated a few times Nothing's official yet. We're still waiting. I mean, we probably would be one of the first places that you would expect to, to hear from, given, you know, our relationship with the team, which is, you know, pretty good, all things considered. Uh, if we're asking Torts for clarification, probably ain't going to get it, but from the others, it's possible. But Ogie raises a good point here, real question, why was his contract terminated? And and that that's another thing. Can I, can I recklessly speculate in a nice way? Like, I, I don't know. I, I look at it like this. If you kind of take everything that was happening a year ago, two years ago, right? Two years ago, the picture comes out from uh, Hanrahan, I think was the one that it was credited to, of, of Fedotov signing the contract with the Flyers. And then not that long after, Fedotov gets whisked away to go serve military service, which was a, a thing. Flyers apply to the league to essentially take the contract and suspend it for a year in hopes that they'd be able to work something out. He goes and does his military service. It feels like there's no chance. He apparently re-ups with, with Moscow. I'm not sure. I have not spoken to anyone. Is it possible that there was a wink and a nod agreement between Fedotov's camp and Moscow that like it's hard he was to gonna say. he was gonna get he was gonna get he was gonna play the year there? And then out, we don't know. And there hasn't yeah. been, they're, they're also like, you know, sometimes you get the, the reports out of Russia and it, it, you know, it can be very hit or miss. You can get like four reports that all contradict. I don't think we'll ever know. Well, we'll really we, may, we may know eventually, but, but it, it won't I, be anytime soon. It's, it's just not to be right now. The one thing you got to remember, and it's kind of hard to, I mean, it's, it, it's easy to forget. He's got two different agents, right? He's got an agent right. who works for him over there in Russia and he's got an agent here in the U S 
uh, or in North America. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, like, there's probably some kind of conversation that goes on between those guys about what's best for their client, right, and how to go about doing what's best for their client. Um, so I think that that's the, that the, the answer to the question that you just posed or the, the scenario that you just put out there is probably somewhere in those details. Yeah. And, you know, will we find them out? I think eventually we probably will. It just might not be, you know, instant gratification society kind of stuff. It might take a little bit of time. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, the whole thing is very wild, guys. And, you know. Does he need I a translator, Anthony? Do you know that at all? Will they need translator or the, will the Russian that's a good, here? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, They're going I'll, to as a team, I think, at some point, right? Like if you, you're you bringing over potentially two Russian goalies. I know a free – there's a free uh, translator available out there if anyone needs one. <laughs> Does he know Russian? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll learn for whatever price you pay him. <laughs> Oh man, um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I you know you got to remember know. you got to remember, Bundy. They they have, in the past they have at times had somebody translate for them, and they've had people. Uh, there was also a time where there was that woman who was um, I forget what her name was off the top of my head, and I, I apologize, but she was a uh, media member for a Russian. She was like a freelance reporter for a Russian newspaper who was always at the games. And they would have her translate a couple times for a couple of people um, in, in over time. So um, it's been, but it's been a while since they've needed a, a Russian translator. <laughs> it's pretty wild stuff. The last quote they just gave me. This one? <laughs> no, not that one. Oh, oh this one. one. This one. There you go. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Clark, Clark can speak Russian. Speak Russian. <laughs> I couldn't say a word if you told me the word. <laughs> if you told. <laughs> oh, oh, say I want to break my stick over his ankle in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that, Ant? Who was the player? Was the, it uh, Varlamov? Uh, it was. It was Varlamov, yeah, Varlamov. Right? Yeah. He, they yeah. went over his ankle, broke his ankle, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, hey, here's a here's a good question for Bundy. Bundy would know. Does no, Hitch speak I, Russian? No, I do not. I'm not going there. I don't have enough time. <laughs> I don't have enough time today. I have yeah, to work I... on it. I got to work on it, Russ. It's like you. I mean, I know you sit in the mirror doing Bernie Sanders like all night because it's great. It's well, great. I mean, listen, I, I I know very limited Russian, but I feel like now my there's an impetus on me to learn Russian, so I'm going to have to do it pretty fast. I can at least introduce myself. Get, get your, get, go get your Rosetta Stone and... and uh... Learn the language, and then you can become the official translator. There was a scene from Family Guy a long time ago, and it was, uh, I think it was Brian the dog speaks Spanish, and he, he says it incorrectly, but he's like, hola, me llamo es Brian, nosotros queremos ir a la playa. And the guy goes, hey, that's pretty good, except when you say me llamo es Brian, you don't need the S, just me llamo Brian. He's like, you're, you're kidding, right? And the guy goes, gay? And he goes, he goes, uh, oh, you speak English. He goes, no, uh, uh, just a couple of phrases in this one explaining it. He goes, you're kidding, right? And he goes, gay? Okay. So that's going to be me. <laughs> I'd walk up to Fedotov and say, which one put them in Yazavut Russell? And I'd introduce myself. It'd be great. And he'd be like, ah! And then, like, he'd say like some Russian thing. And then I'd be like, I don't know, man. I don't know. So we're, we're pretty screwed, guys. Here at Snow the Goalie. Don't ask me to uh, put it in Cyrillic. I can't write Snow the Goalie in, uh, in Cyrillic yet. I'll, I'll get there. By the time, listen, by the time Mishkov's over here, I will speak at least passable Russian. That, that has been my promise to the, the Russians who will play here. Guys, question. If Kolosov ends up being good, and Fedotov comes over, and he's good, and Mishkov comes over, and what's his name, Demidov, like what if he says he only wants to play in, in here? Wouldn't it be something if the Flyers became the hub of Russian players? Wouldn't that be something? Full circle moment. Not full circle. It would be a 180. It'd be a full 180. And then eventually yeah. you would you'd go the other way. The pendulum would swing. You'd get three six. Listen, I think this is great, guys. I think that if if he ends up coming over, Fedotov comes over. Let's actually have this real quick before we head out. Kolosov's 22. He had a good season. Fedotov is 27, has more experience. Given what they're coming from experience-wise, are you more apt to give the younger guy that you think has a longer-term future here in Kolosov the chance? Or do you say, you know what, if we're going to give one of these guys a start, 
to see what he's got. We want to go with this big 27-year-old goalie who, by the way, would become a free agent, an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. Like, do you do you think it's more important that they see him and, and know what they have? Well, I mean, that's a th- that's the thing. I mean, Kol- the Kolosov is signed for two more years on his ELC, um, so you have him here regardless whether he's you know ready or not. He's still going to be here, um, and and Fedotov, if he does come over and he's here, um, yeah, it, he's only signed through the end of this season, and then he's a free agent, right? So you would probably say that would be the case. I just look at it this way. Uh, I don't I don't know right now. I don't think we could say the next time well, when the Flyers play back to back next weekend, Buffalo and Columbus. I'm not certain that we know who the goalie is that's going to play that's not Sam Erson. It could be any one of a number of people. Yeah. Like let's let's not I, forget Urson is, is still the number 1 goalie here, yeah. right? Like that's that that's in stone unless something absolute wheels fall off and they find just a miracle. But that it's Sam's net, and it's a good thing the Flyers have to sort it out. You know they got two other options coming in here. You can't. I I doubt they were going to put Sandstrom back in. Like I don't know how they're going to do that again. I mean maybe he had one more game to play, but uh, you know for all intents and purposes this week might have been his last start. Yeah. At this level, and it, Rory, I'm, I'm sure it is now. Rory here with the uh, super chat. Thank you, Rory. Very kind of you. Uh, says Danny will draft Demidov to the Flyers. Can we just give flowers to how Navy SEAL quiet Danny has been operating? Danny took Howie's GM for dummies class. The, there is something to be said for how sealed up this stuff has been. Well, I think that they the stuff that has had to be specifically sealed up, they've done a great job with. Like, they've really, really not talked about it at all and, and prevented leaks from getting out. Like, they probably have kept it... You know, when you talk about this and you talk about the Gauthier trade, it was probably such a small circle yeah. uh, of people that were in the know. Um, and when I say small, we're talking four or five max, right, that knew about it. Um, but so I think that that's smart. I think that that's really smart. It's it's, And I don't say that because, you know, I'm the guy trying to, you know, get all this information all the time. Um I, I only ask when I kind of get someone tells me, say, hey, you know, you should check this out or look into this or whatever. And, okay, yeah, I'm going to go look it out. I'll check it out. But so if, if it's not kind of getting out and it's something that they're keeping within that very small circle, it's not getting to me. It's not getting to anybody else who might have it unless they want it out. Let's yeah. keep that in mind. So that's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing here, Ant, real quick before we go, is that there have been a few people who have kind of expressed this this thought. But when Jonesy said a lot of Russian goalies in the pipeline, there have been people asking, is it possible that the Flyers thought this was a possibility and that's why they didn't trade out an asset to get a veteran netminder at the deadline? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Um, I mean, I kind of think that they looked at the Col- – they knew Kolosov could come over as soon as his season was up. Right. And, you know, they didn't know if that team was going to make the playoffs probably at that time. It looked like it, but it wasn't a guarantee. Um, so they kind of knew that there was a chance that he was get coming over here at some point. Um, so, yeah, th- I think that that's part of it. I'm not sure that he was confident that they were going to get something done with Fedotov. Like, I mean, I, that, I can't say that. And you also got to remember they do have another Russian goalie that they drafted in, in Igor Zavregan. Um, so, you know, when he said we have Russian goalies in the pipeline and some that are closer than others, of course, we took it as Kolosov is the closest and Zavregan's down the line because he's only 18. But maybe he did. Maybe he had a little bit of a of a sense that something could possibly shake loose with this guy Fedotov and, and, and get him over here. Um, I, I can't say that for certain, but maybe. Maybe Jonesy knew, and I give him a lot of credit too because he's another one who is who is keeping it, you know, airtight uh, on these on these really kind of important roster decisions. Yeah, makes sense. All right, good stuff, guys. Um, we will be back later this week. Yeah, we did a show. Was it yesterday? We recorded. That was yesterday, right? Or was it two days ago? No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. It, it was yesterday. Okay. So, you know, that's what we get for doing a regular episode. Are we giving the, picks? Uh, we should do picks. Did, did intern Andrew send you his pick? Yeah, he did. He sent me a pick over. Okay. Well, so, we should, in, we intern Andrew said, 
Intern Andrews said three two flyers. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Against the Canadians. Okay. Um, I think the Flyers are going to lay a biblical beatdown on the Canadians. I, mm. I'm going to actually take them to win five to two. Hmm. I'm glad to see Andrews alive and well. Yeah, 216 degree fever, but he's, yeah, he's well. We think it's a sign of life, but we really can't be sure, can we? Yeah. Until yeah. we actually see him. That's true. So. That's true. Of course, he does have the login. He can always just pop in here, and no, we never he's see not him right now. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I do worry a little bit about this game tonight, guys. Uh, I think that this has a real letdown uh, possibility. You just came off of that seven-game gauntlet. You did well enough for yourself, right, getting the six points. And now you go, you think you can take a breather. And this Montreal team just surprised uh, Colorado. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche in Denver the other night. That said, I'm still going to pick the Flyers. <laughs> Such a long ass way to get. To. <laughs> but I'm saying it because I think it's a close game. And and the other thing about Montreal is, in recently they've been playing mostly low scoring games. Yeah, and they so, have. And I think that so I think this is going to be a low scoring game. On both the score. Flyers have played pretty well, other than the Rangers. Obviously, the Rangers game got a little crazy in the third period. But for the most part, they've played tight defensive games too. I'm going to take the Flyers in this one, and I think intern Andrew had a great score. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm going to have to give the same score, three to two Flyers. Yeah. But I, man, it's it's uh, it's it's not going to be an easy one tonight. I took the Flyers the other night. I deserved far better in New York for having the ball, Stephen. I mean, I did. I thought the Flyers would play well. They had a two nothing lead. You know, I mean, that should be it. Um, Montreal's coming off a long road trip. Uh, they won their last two games. They don't score a lot. They don't give up a lot. Um, I don't like this game tonight at all. I really don't. I don't like it at all. And it is a three-two final for Montreal. Wow. Maybe even overtime. It might. E- it I- might even be. It might even be overtime. Like I'm saying that. All I give. All I care now is that the Flyers get a point. But I'd be surprised if this is an easy game tonight. St. Louis is back. He's he knows Torts. They play well against the Flyers. Since he's been there, I mean, at least keep the games interesting. I, I this is going to be a harder game than people think, and I know you just want to look at it and go, "Oh, it's Montreal's two points." Ah. Yeah. There's going to yeah. be a game. There's going to be a game somewhere here or two that they're going to lose, and you'll be like, "Oh, I didn't see that coming," and that's yeah. the way it goes. And I debated this. I, I almost went the other way. I'm sticking. I'm, I'm sticking with my Flyers pick, just because I think that they get it, but. Yeah, I do think it's a tight game and tough game, and it's late decision, late third yeah. or overtime or shootout or something. It's gonna it's gonna be one of those, you know, finger fingernail biting games for sure. Three yep. two Montreal, and All I right. have to catch you guys again for that one the other night. So yeah, that's true. All right, well, a big thank you to everybody who tuned in live. Um, Don't forget to tweet that out, Russ. I already did. Oh, you uh, did. Big thank you to everybody who joined us live. You know, if you haven't done so already, I, I know I put this out, I know I say it a lot. We're getting close to 3,000 subscribers. I want to get to 3,000 soon. Like, they're, they're kind of on the precipice of maybe making the playoffs. Like, let's let's have a moment together, okay? Go over to YouTube, search for Snow the Goalie or youtube.com slash at Snow the Goalie. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the little bell so you get notified whenever we do a show, especially an emergency show like this. We had like five minutes between when I created the stream itself and we actually went live. So ring that bell so you're notified whenever... Uh, we go live, and if you like podcasts, if you like the podcast feed, we're over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and wherever you get your podcasts. If you're on Google Podcasts, you have to pick a new app because that app is about to, to, to go the way of the dodo. So pick a different app. Go subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review. And that's not only doing the rating, but it's also saying something to us. Remember, if you love us, you hate us, you'll never forget us. Leave a little message, and we'll read it on the show. And um, I guess that's it, guys. So for Ant, for Bundy, I'm Russ. We'll be back later this week with a Press Row show. Until then, thank you for listening to Sneg Vreti, the only <laughs> Flyers podcast. Did you actually did you do the Google Translate to get that? Yeah, Sneg Vreti. Although I'm <laughs> guessing that Sneg is actually the noun and not the verb, but I'm going to learn, guys. Sneg Vreti, the only Flyers podcast. If, if you try to do the only Flyers, it's very long. I didn't get that far, right? Just Sneg Vreti. And we'll find out, and maybe Fedotov's going to listen to this, and he's going to be like, ah, yeah, cool. And I'm going to be like, ah, great. Love to, love to see you, fella. Anyway, we'll be back later this week. Everybody have a great day. We will talk to all of you very, very soon.